Well, good morning. Yes, it's me, and I'm here once again, Kenny Polkar, your host of the party. And today is Thursday, April 11th, 2024. And here are the things that you need to know to get your day started. Oh my God, CPI surprise to the upside. Now, not by very much, but it was the super core CPI that is going to prove to be even more of an issue for the Fed. Bond yield surge on the back of that news and stocks get whacked, right? So you got to ask, is this the beginning of maybe a pullback? And what do we have in dinner tonight? We're going to have the classic feel-good bolognese. So delicious and so delicious to make and eat. Okay, so reality check, aisle five, super core inflation is on fire and small and mid caps just fall off the shelves. Stocks got whacked. Algos all run for the door at the same time, causing all kinds of chaos yesterday. Bids disappeared, leaving voids in prices, causing stocks to hit a sinkhole. That's a Florida reference. As the sellers go into this get me out uh, mode, as the CPI came in a bit hotter, and the super core CPI came in even hotter than expected, leaving many to realize that the thought of any rate cut in the near future is all but extinguished. Now, although some are suggesting that the cut's just been pushed from June to July and that we're still getting two rate cuts this year, and I'm saying, are you kidding me? Inflation is sticky. It is not going away anytime soon. Get over it. At the end of the day, the Dow lost 425 points or 1%. The S&P down 50 points or 1%. The NASDAQ lost 160, uh, 136 points or uh, 8 tenths. The Russell lost 52 points or 2.5%. The transports gave up 365 points or 2.3%, while the equal way S&P lost 110 points or 1.6%. Bonds got whacked as well as treasuries get repriced. The TLT down 2.2, the TLH down 2%, causing yields to surge. The two-year rose by 21 basis points to end the day at 4.95% after testing as high as 498 the 10-year shot up by 18 basis points and the day at 4.53 after testing 4.56. And bonds are beginning today in another weaker position. Now, are any of you really surprised? Do you really think inflate, that the inflation monster was dead? Did you really think we're getting multiple rate cuts in 2024? That doesn't mean I'm getting all worked up about it. I'm not. Because I have been in this camp for months. I have been playing it, expecting the news that we got. I put money to work where I found value. And if you've been following me, you know this. I never understood the six or seven rate cut narrative that the street created. In fact, I kept saying it's illogical. In any event, maybe now we're going to get that much needed pullback in stocks that I have been waiting for. And if you're a long-term investor, you should hope that we do too. So yesterday's move extended the early April losses, leaving the S&P only down 2.5% off the March high. Hardly anything to call mummy about. <coughs> Remember, when the month and the quarter began, I warned you that the first couple of weeks in April tend to be volatile and weak. Some of that can be credited to the start of the new quarter. Some of it can be credited to tax day. Some of it can be credited to the start of earnings season. As investors wonder how that's going to turn out, right? Now, just so you know, I am not bearish on earnings. I think we're going to continue to get that 75% plus beat rate on both the top and the bottom lines. And I think forward guidance will be mostly upbeat. Maybe not for Tesla, as I pointed out yesterday, but I am excited to hear about how everyone else is viewing it. The only thing that's going to damage or change my mind is what the C-suite says about what inflation is doing to their margins. Now, to that point, yesterday, we got, uh, we, after we got that jarring CPI report, we heard from Delta Airlines and the CEO, and guess what he told us? Things are great at Delta Airlines. He sees record revenues as business travel accelerates, capacity expands, and the premium ticket sales surge. First quarter revenues up 8% year over year. Adjusted operating revenue up 6%. Both top and bottom lines beating consensus estimates. Earnings per share 45 cents versus handily beating the 36% estimate. In the end, travel remains strong and healthy. The stock traded higher out of the gate, 
but couldn't fight the overall negative tone in the broader market, so they ended up taking it down 2.8% to end the day. But just to clarify, even after that move, Delta Airlines is still up 15% year to date, Kamish. Okay, so let's tear it apart, shall we? Top line CPI came in at up four tenths month over month, and next food and energy came in up four tenths month over month, both higher than the expectation. Year over year numbers came in at plus 3.5 and plus 3.8 respectively as well. Okay, also slightly hot, hotter than the expectation. But if you look at the super core CPI, which strips out food, energy, and housing, you find a very different story. It was up 4.8% year over year and is running at more than 8% on a three month annualized basis. And this complicates the story for JJ and all of those traders that created the multiple rate cut story. As some of the most stubborn parts of this story are the things we all need. Think car and housing insurance and property taxes, all things that hit us every day. You see, cars are more expensive to buy and they're more expensive to fix. Houses are more expensive to build and buy, and they're more expensive to fix. Property taxes never go down. In fact, six months ago, I got rear-ended on 95 South, right, down in uh, Boca. What I thought was maybe $7,000 worth of damage turned out to be $24,000 worth of damage, right? You got to think the, rear, the cameras and all the other tech along with the body damage. I mean, it's ridiculous, really. They kept my car for three months while they waited for parts, forcing me to rent a car, creating another $4,500 worth of rental charges. And I rented a Volkswagen Jetta. I didn't rent a Bentley, by the way. In any event, I'm sure that the woman who hit me is about to face huge increases in her insurance premium if they even keep her. And if they don't, she's going to either find another insurer or just forego having any insurance at all, which apparently is very possible here in Florida, which I never understood. Hello, Ronnie, what's up with that? You allow people to own a car in Florida, but you don't force them to insure it? What am I missing? Is that me? I don't know. Anyway, so what are we going to get today in today's PPI report, which defines inflation at the producer level? What manufacturers are paying for the raw materials that they need to produce the stuff that you and I buy? And that is expected to be slightly lower month over month, but slightly higher year over year, right? Think rinse and repeat from yesterday. Futures this morning are down. The Dow's down 100. The SP's down 14. The Nasdaq's down 40. The Russell's down 10. Tensions are running high and algo's ready to pounce. In fact, futures have gotten weaker since I wrote this as we await the 8.30 a.m. report. In the end, the stronger jobs report on Friday... Uh, and yesterday's inflation report, that was hotter than expected, and the FOMC minutes, which showed that the Fed's favors a slowdown in any talk of a rate cut, are all complicating the timing of any decision. In fact, what's happening now is talk of a possible rate hike rather than a rate cut. And while that's not what I expect, you have to put it back on the table as an option. Again, the economic data remains robust. Unemployment still has a three-handle on it, and the Bidens are printing and spending money like nobody's business. So the idea that inflation was going to go away was illogical, period, the end. And this is what's going to cause investors to rethink what they're willing to pay for stocks. Currently, the market's trading at about 23 times 2024 earnings, a bit rich considering what we know now. And a bit rich, considering the two-year Treasury's kissing 5%, and the 10 years about to kiss 4.75% on its way to 5%. And so all this means is that you need to be aware of what you do with your money. If you're nervous, stick some cash into your money market fund that's paying you five and a quarter percent. Because that too is an investment decision. And it keeps you completely liquid in the event that you see an opportunity that you want to jump in on. Now, this morning, oil is trading at 85.70, gold's trading at 23.55, both off a bit after the dramatic run that we've seen over the last, you know, four or five weeks. This should not be a surprise to anybody, and we talked about that yesterday. In the end, stocks are in retreat, bonds are in retreat, yields are at four-month highs, economic reports are strong, prices for commodities, food, utilities, gas, housing, insurance, airline seats, gym memberships, fast food, wine, beer, dry cleaning, and more continue to go up. Somewhere between 3.8% and 4.8% according to what the CPI told us yesterday. Earnings officially kick off tomorrow with the big banks, right? So 
JP Morgan, BlackRock's an asset manager, not a bank, but they're reporting tomorrow. Wells Fargo, State Street, and Citibank. Listen to what the C-suite has to say about net interest income, sales and trading, investment banking, and the ever important loan loss reserve accounts. Now, I'm a big Jamie Dimon fan. I own JP Morgan, I love JP Morgan, I'm gonna die with my JP Morgan. I do not expect him to disappoint. But the stock is up 15% year to date. So I would not be surprised to see some investors hit the sell button to lock in the profits after the, after the report. Great. Go for it. Unless the fundamental story changes for me, then it's just all noise. So I guess you know what I'm going to be doing. European markets are under pressure as they and we, by the way, await today's ECB policy statement. Not sure what's the wait. Christine Lagarde and others have been very clear, just like JJ, the ECB is going to remain on hold. Kabish. Now, the S&P closed at 5160, down 50 points yesterday. And yesterday morning, I said that I suspect that we're going to uh, see some churn lower rather than churn higher, and I remain in that camp. As noted above, the S&P is only down 2.5% from the high. <coughs> I would love to see us shake the branches a bit more. You know, some people say 5 or 6%. I see let it shake 10 to 12%, which would take us certainly back to somewhere between 47 and 4,900, a level last seen in February. But while I would like to see that, I don't think we're going to see it. Yesterday, we tested 51.38 on the S&P, and today's, if today's PPI causes the same angst, then we're going to test 5,100. And that's going to represent a 3.5% decline from the high and leave us sitting right on the short-term trend line, a level I think that we're going to end up holding. Now, if it doesn't, then it doesn't. And 50-50 is going to be the next stop. I remain cautious, which doesn't mean I'm a seller of any of, any of my long-term assets. It just means I remain cautious and will put money to work strategically. And if that means putting some money in cash, then it's going to leave in cash. It's earning 5 and a half, 5 and a quarter percent. Remember, if you're nervous, uh, you can do that, right? And it's completely liquid. And it is a decision. An April pullback is not uncommon. We discussed this. As a long-term investor, you want to take advantage of price dislocations caused by anxiety, not caused by a negative fundamental change in the story. That's different. So remain focused. Stick to your plan. Call me to discuss. I'm always happy to help you create a long-term wealth plan that will provide for you and for generations to come. Okay, so what are we having for dinner tonight? Well, I, I wanted to give you the classic bolognese because it's a feel-good meal when you're not feeling so good. And there's a lot of people out there that maybe aren't feeling so good right now, so they're not sure what to do. So you know what? Make the bolognese, boil up some pasta, and have dinner. Now, for this, you need the olive oil, you need butter, you need a chopped onion, chopped celery, chopped carrots, you need a pound or so of ground chuck, right? The 80-20 kind. You want a lot of fat in it because it gives it the flavor. You can also add a half a pound of ground pork, but you can use all ground chuck if you prefer, but you could use both. You need salt and pepper, whole milk, nutmeg, dry white wine, two cans of San Marzano tomatoes, hand crushed, and then some fresh related Parmigiana cheese on the table. Now, heat a large, heavy pot, a uh, five quart pan over medium heat with you know two rounds of olive oil and then three quarters of a stick of butter. When the butter melts and stops foaming, now you're gonna add in the celery, the carrots, and the onions, and you're gonna saute all of that for you know five to seven minutes. You wanna chop the, the carrots up small and the celery up small. Now add in the meat, season it with salt and pepper, breaking up the meat with the back of the wooden spoon, make sure you get it all nice and brown, right? Once it's done, reduce the heat to low and then pour in two cups of whole milk and let it simmer until the milk is all evaporated. That's going to take about an hour. Now stir in a pinch of nutmeg, adding the, the white wine, two cups of Pinot Grigio Santa Margarita, stirring it frequently until that's evaporated. It takes about another hour. Now add in the hand-crushed tomatoes, Turn the heat up to medium high. When it starts to boil, then turn the heat to simmer and just let it simmer away, stirring constantly, right? Or occasionally. Do not let it dry out or stick to the bottom of the pan. If you need to, add like a half a cup of water. You'll know when it's done because the water will be gone and the fat will be separated from the sauce, right? You want to taste and adjust the seasoning if necessary. Now, Boil up your pasta. Tagliatelle works really well with this dish, right? It's kind of a wide, fat noodle. 
Uh, you want to cook that till it's al dente. When it's done, you're going to strain the pasta, always saving a mugful of the pasta water, which we call Tears of the Gods. Add that back to the pot, toss in a half, add the pasta back to the pot, toss in a half a stick of butter, which you've cut up so it melts, and let it coat the pasta. Now, if the pasta appears to be drying out, then re-moisten it with just a bit of the water. Don't make a puddle. Now, stir it up, then serve it in bowls the pasta, then top it with a ladle of the bolognese sauce, or a ladle and a half, whatever. Enough that, you know, when you mix it, you're going you're gonna to have a nice sauce uh, on your pasta. You always want to have the grated cheese, the fresh grated parmigiana cheese, on the table for your guests to enjoy. And again, you can serve this up with the white wine you used to cook it with, or you can serve it up with the, you know, kind of a, uh, a medium bodied red. You know, you listen, you could even use a, a Chianti, which is, you know, not a really expensive wine, but it, 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 it's a traditional Italian wine. You see it on every Italian household. You walk into the house when you go to Naples and Rome and sit right on the kitchen table is a bottle of Chianti because it's always there. Um, or, you know, a Pinot Noir or something. Like that. You don't want a really heavy red wine because it's not like a steak dish that you're having or an Osabuco or, you know, something really, really uh, full and filling. So you don't want the wine to be too overpowering. You want the focus to be on the classic Bolognese. In any event, look, it's going to be a beautiful day out there. I know it looks a little bit cloudy right now. And maybe that's indicative of what's going to happen to the market. Say a little bit cloudy uh, like it was yesterday. Uh, but we'll see. In any event, until tomorrow, take good care.